Let's go check out our cougar. Half ton. Right. See, let's see, let's see. I am. Where did this? Ohio. All the way from the Buckeye. Upstairs. Let's see what's going on. It's your typical RV roof. Put more on, more on. That's what we do. We're getting ready to get this all squared away. Then we're going to protect all the side of the coach. And this is your famous OSB roof system. Decking is terrible. I'm not an OSB fan. If I can prevent it, I will. What you seeing? In that corner. Hmm. Whoop! There goes a the knife. Ah! A little punky there. That'll go good with coffee. Coffee and mold. What'd you see over here? Oh, it really causes this. The what? All the little buddies just eating the coach away. There's a whole bunch of bugs over here. Carpenter ants. Carpenter ants? Where are they at? All over that corner. Really? Running away now. Were they wearing a tool belt? Yeah. If they're not wearing a tool the if they're not wearing a tool belt, if there's a knife again, they're probably union ones. You know? Mm. They put yeah, tools right. down here so they can walk back over there to get it again. <laughs> really chew up that clock. <laughs> I don't see any ants in here. All right. Well, you can see they got the corner edge on here. They're probably shaving it down. That's all they do. Then it kind of pokes up. But we'll check it all out, obviously, when we open it up. But all they do is just slobber this self-leveling on here. You all know that trick. So, if you've watched my videos before. Put more on, more on. You can see right here. Okay? You have to keep going over all this. Chances are we won't salvage that skylight. I know by the time we take that and try to loosen it up, it's probably going to crack. If it isn't already, I don't know. But we'll do the best we can. Sometimes it's hard to get them all cleaned up to put back on. So you can see it's all drooling down here. It's got a heck of a camber to it. So we're going to uh, some more on the antenna, on the plumbing. Scuse, scuse. And let's see what else we got. I didn't see any major breaching in here. So, I can't remember why he exactly brought it in. But, I would have liked to have seen that down a little better. I don't like the way that profile is up, but we'll see how bad it is. You know? Alright, let us get to work. That's, uh, that's not a vent. So, if somebody told you that on the sales force, the sales floor, and say, hey, we got vents in there. They're not vents. There's no way they can vent anyway. It just, it just doesn't work like that. Uh, you have to have a lower draw, much like where your, the gutter of your house is. And then you have your reach vent on the top. That air will get a draw. You can't get a draw because there's no lower portion for it to pull. Just a little ant right there. So, uh, there's a really access ports is what they are. So in case you want to run something, maybe easier to reach inside and pull something back and forth. So, all right, let's rip it apart and see what we got. We have got the roof decking up. Aluminum trusses. That's what we got. I don't know if there's much we can do about this. We can try and go in and reinforce it a little bit. Put a jack in there if we can get in there. Probably not. Because this slide comes out. That's the only way you can get in that door. So, but some of the things we look for is... This is a good example, very good example. That is a ferrule, this piece. That's so you cannot put like a, a fastener through the wire. Look at the way this wire is curled around. Let's just take a gander at that. Gander is the word of the day.
get rid of them out of here. See, it's already cutting in there. It already went right through the sheathing. I don't know what rocket scientists thought this was a good idea. One, you didn't need a ferrule up that high, but the inside of this is real sharp. Let's check out this one. There, go around the other way here. So we're gonna we're gonna do a fix on it. This one here just looks like it kind of scored this. This is called a sheath on the outside, but it doesn't look like it went into the wire or even the insulation on the wire. So these are the reasons why we open a roof up and check all that. And then the other reason we do it, where some of those uh, wires were they already coming through the AC? Did you see it scoring through there? I don't know. They got these holes in them that don't patch it up. You got holes in them? Where they drill through to put the uh, vent on the bottom, they drill holes straight through. Oh, okay. So what we generally look for though, is like these wires keep coming, they come across. Here's the one right here. And they start digging in. This is a good example. You got one here. And it'll start digging in and then eventually, this is just foam. And then it, when it creates a hole, now you have air coming up into this, if you want to call this the attic area. That's not a good mix on a hot roof. There's another one right there. So we got to fix that. Now these are things that we look for. So the um, the engineer or the architect who put this together decided to put the speaker uh, right up underneath a truss right here. Look at there. Instead of moving it over just a shade. I'm guessing they probably couldn't move it over too much because I'm looking at this pipe and normally that's in a uh, chase wall So unless there's another section over there. I can't remember the layout of this thing But anyhow that, that should have been over here or screwed it over, right? That makes sense get another where the glue is kind of let loose now This got a lot of camber, so it's not gonna fall down But if it was something that we could have corrected we would have I don't like the way these are I don't like these trusses a lot of people say hey, they're aluminum trusses. They're great they're just cheap. This is cheap alloy. You can't do anything to this. You know, they've got it all cinched together. But, you know, you can see, I don't know if you can see this one. It's all wonky. It's leaning this way. But we got to kind of jack it back and pull it back. Is it secured down that end? Will it move? Hey, look at it. It's leaning this way. You got to really. We got to get that secured back. So there's a little bit of stuff we want to do. There's nothing on this edge right here to hold the plywood so we're gonna probably have to put little blocks in here just so we can cinch down our plywood to get that to hold proper this is all they've got is this little 5 8 piece of aluminum on the edge here for a band um, but you know get it built get it out get it sold they don't care so let us uh, do some reconstruction here or some modifications now that we've taken a gander at it and we're gonna that's what we're gonna do put those in there and then we'll um, fix some of these trusses up the best we can so we can start laying decking normally I put half inch on the deck you're not getting half inch to bend this way you can get that this had uh, 3 8 OSB on it so we're gonna end up going back with 3 8 plywood that's all we can do because uh, you're not gonna get it to you're not gonna get that plywood to bend not with this radius that's a good that's a good arch on this thing so and then we got another one over there so all right let's get some bushings in there we'll show you how we fix it you got a bushing over there is there one right there let's see if we got one real quick so the fix on this and i'd say that they will not put even one more red scent in these coaches not yet one more red scent here's your red scent right there thank you mr. CFO for watching those pennies on this coach what customer would want to spend an extra penny well in this case there's a few of these that would be almost another nickel holy cow another nickel to make sure their wires don't get all 
Yeah, that's a good thing you got a CFO with a sharp pencil. That's it, that's the fix. And the fact this red piece is a bushing, and it, it is an electrical code. Not on campers, because they don't have codes. And let's say they, the only thing they have to do is make sure it doesn't fall apart going down the road. That's it. But other than that, there are no codes to these things. So you see that RVIA tag on the door? You look at that. What that means is they promise to build it on a new chassis. That's all that means. That's all that means. I've already looked into it because I was going to start building them myself. So that's all we do. We go around and put these bushings in because the inside of these are really sharp. So you can get these anywhere. These are, I think I got these ones at Home Depot. But we'll uh, get this in. Once I can finagle this with my left hand, there we go. So that's what we're going to do. So let's, I don't even know if you can read the package, but all they are, let me see if I can get this thing opened up here. These ones are, that's all they are. Yes, these are three millimeter, what did it say there? Number three, bushings. So you can see the size and everything, but you can always cut them. Anyhow, they're like, I don't know, there's 20 of them in there, they're like a dollar, dollar fifty or something, they're, they're cheap, they're cheap, so, anywho, that's what we're going to do, so what we did on the fix of these is, um, these wires on and over, I took a piece of aluminum, we just bent it over, taped the aluminum down, then we taped these to the wires, so we want to make sure it's all, it, it's not going to chafe into the duct work, you know, once this all happens, after we put the roof on, you put the roof on, then um, and the ductwork does breach, how do you fix it? You got to take sealing out of the roof off. Something's coming apart to get at it to fix it, right? You don't want to do that. You take it all off. People just think you can do that spray system. If that spray system worked, if it really did, I would be doing it. Uh, when I did commercial work, I had big sprayers. I had roll foamers for metal. I had big recovery machines. I had all that stuff doesn't work on a coach and you'd be a fool to do it anyways again because of the underlying issues that you can see just on not on this coach but go to watch some of my other videos these manufacturers don't care they don't that's probably why I have no sponsors because I call them out on it but they need to do a better job for sure people pay a lot of money for these coaches and they brag about the quality hey the quality the quality there's no quality in these they are all built the same way from manufacturer to manufacturer they're all the same all the same so these manufacturers will buy these trusses from a vendor and it could be you know whatever maybe Jayco or Keystone or or uh, I don't know throw some other ones out there but they're all the same they just buy these and then they just design around it and that's how they build them you know this is we did another one and I don't know they, the last one we did was similar to this too I can't remember what it was um, but anyhow it had a similar band on the edge you just didn't have this much of a, a roll or a camber or an arch uh, like this one does but my point is that they're all generally built about the same way which there's they call it the industry standard it's a really crappy standard it's low um, it's a really low standard you know it's not like you have to be um, uh, really good at what you do you just have to be a monkey to put it together but it's a shame because like I said it's it just the uh, customer is the one that's going to end up paying and flipping the tab to have everything corrected after they had already purchased uh, a coach you know uh, enough about me griping and everything let me get some work so as I was putting the camera back I was looking at this truss you can see how narrow that is then it gets wider up there and I was wondering why I thought maybe the truss was off then I was looking at the wall to see if the wall was true. Then what we figured out, press that wall in so we can show our viewers. Looky there, the wall is not secured to the roof. We call that buoyant. Got a buoyant wall. So we're trying to see if we can get that situated. And but I guess they want to put screws in the wall to hold it together. But this truss should have been secured to there, you know. And then uh, I, a lot of times I like to put a gutter on here, but these lights are too high up, so I won't be able to do it. I may have to go back, use the row, their existing uh, term bar, basically what is term 
term bar means termination. It's like just a flat piece of stock. So that's what we call it in the commercial biz. I think, I don't know what they call it in the RV biz, but I need to learn their lingo because they don't know what the hell they're doing. So, but anyhow, that's a problem there. So we're going to see how we can get this stitched up proper. We'll give it a try. All right, so I don't know if you can see, too. I got a little screw in there, got a black head on it. We reset them. So I put a series of screws down there to pull that back. And then we'll pull this back. That's about all we can do. See how the, if you look at this, there's a gap here. There's one there. We'll pull this truss back a little bit. So we'll get that balanced out. That should have been done because that, that wall moving like that could really down the road be a problem. You know, eventually. I don't think it would be an immediate problem, but you want everything secured and glued together, and they just don't do all that. Oh. All right, so we fixed the ceiling right here. That was one that had the big gap in it, and this is a, a cool trick. So what we did is we glued some sheet metal to it. Then you take a jazzy suction cup right there, and then you can put this on here and a strap to there, and then we had a crane pulling it up here on the top. We had eight union guys around the other side. One little midget on the inside that was uh, top of the slide all pressing it up and we're going to go let him out because he's been there all night. He's probably got some sore arms. And ta-da, this is what you got, you know. It's there. We also screwed all this back. I think I already showed you all that. Secured that. And now we're just uh, got some blocking in here. That's so we can put the gutter on. There's really not a lot there. And also when the sheathing comes down, I want to be able to fasten it in between the bays. And on the edge and there's no way to do that so that was the other reason for this okay so other than that we and then now uh, get straps here and what that does balance out the trusses because the trusses were all squirrely they were not sitting proper so when you go to throw your decking on they want to move because this is just cheap shit that's what it is say what it is it is what it is so when you go to put a screw in it sometimes they'll want to wander so we put these on there to keep them tight and that's us so now we get some decking put the insulation back in get some decking on here and we have the rock and roll all right so the insulation obviously back in and obviously you can see we got the decking on here screwed it all down glued it all down you actually see all the glue right there there's a glue drooling on the roof so we've got this going down and uh, you can see we use plywood. This is BC grade plywood. You're not going to get half inch to bend that way. This is 3 eighths. That's the best I could do. Um, other than that, get what, one more sheet I think they're prepping up for in here. Once they get that on, and we can start assembling this roof. You know, get the roofing on here and so forth. So uh, we're plugging along. This is what we got going on. Get the shoulders back on. We just screwed them all down. And we'll probably be putting the strips on here, you know. And the way some of these trusses are, I don't really like these aluminum trusses. They're really squirrely, really thin. So when you try to get a screw in it, it, it actually, the truss wants to walk. So it's hard to keep that truss like tight so you can get the screw in it. But, you know, it takes a little bit of work, but we got it. All right, check us out. We're making some headway here. We got the uh, shoulders back on. You can see we got our protective strips on there. And we just wiped it all down, get all the dust off. And uh, get the back protected as well. So... We're going to roll out the roofing here in a minute, and then we can get it all glued down. So here comes our roofing. They got a big roller over there. Rolls it out like some paper towels. Makes it a lot easier. That's for show. All right, let me cut it, glue it, stick it, roll it, do all that jazzy stuff. And she's on. That's her. Ta-da. All right, you can see the sheen on here. Uh, we've already got the driver's side that's already glued so now we're going to roll it over well, you can see how much glue we use it's not coming up this isn't like your regular rv glue and it'll blow off it's not like that at all once it sticks it's stuck that's it it's there so we're going to roll this over then we're going to start getting this roof assembled goodbye cougar we are done november 23 that's when we installed the roof so now when the customer comes back, we have an idea how old the roof is and, you know, if there's any issues with it. It just gives us an idea of how old the roof is. Also, if he decided to uh, sell the coach, then 
you know, obviously these roofs on the way they come out of the factory are terrible. So someone could come up here and want to try to negotiate them down and go, hey, wait a minute, I just put the roof on November 23. It's still under warranty. You know, we do transferable warranties. Um, also, I want to thank the customer for bringing the coach to us. We appreciate the work. And you can see we're all done. So one thing I wasn't able to do, which I usually like to do, I like to put a gutter on the back, but see how close this is? I wouldn't have been able to get the gutter down there. It just wouldn't have worked. So I would have had to try to renegotiate the lights, and then if I dropped this, I'd have to drop them all, and then they interfere with that camera. You know, and they're not going to poke a bear that don't need to be poked. It's just a preference that I have. This has a lot of camber. The water is going to move. Uh, it's not a, an issue, really. Uh, it's just, just something that I like to do. Um, anyhow, so the roof system, 60 mil, commercial grade roof. Commercial grade roofs start off at 45, so not only are we upgrading this roof from an RV grade material, which is usually like 25 or 30, I think it is. It's cheap. I think it's 25 mil. That's how thick it is. Not only are we upgrading it to a commercial level, the commercial level starts off at 45. We even upped it one more on that, so it's 60. So uh, that's, this is a really strong roof. This is the TPO roof, which stands for thermoplastic. Thermoplastic gives you the ability to weld things together. There are PVC roofs out there as well. That's another type of product. PVC roofs are expensive. And I know there's probably someone out there going, yep, PVC roof is the way to go. Pound for pound, dollar for dollar, TPO roof is the way you want to go. If it worked better and it gave better performance and so forth, and it was cost effective, that's the other thing. If it was cost effective, then I would probably opt for it. But PVC roofs are generally more expensive. The material is um, designed for like chemical plants or where there's going to be some sort of exhaust or fallout that may otherwise deteriorate other roof systems like EPDM rubber or even like TPO. That's the purpose of a PVC roof. So all that said, everything is all heat welded. Everything we do is all heat welded. I make all these, I fabricate all these curves. They're all done here at the shop. So uh, all that said, this is not a DIY channel. You know, if you get some tips out of it, great kudos, have at it, but they're not intended for that. We want to show Mr. Customer all the work we did to his coach because people always have questions. And that was the purpose of the um, YouTube channel. It wasn't designed to uh, do a revenue thing because I really, for what I get off it, it, it isn't even worth it anyway. So I mean, it's just more of a pain in the butt. I don't like seeing a commercial every six minutes either. So um, all that said, that's the purpose of it. So again, if you get a tip out of it, awesome. But um, so all of this is all heat welded around here, all those curves, and they're all built with what's a, what I call a counter flash. So the flashing is a part at the bottom. That's the part that we heat weld all the way around. That's that. What this little tab sticking out here, and it goes all around the perimeter, that's a counter flash. And that counter flash, when the water is rushing across the roof as you're traveling, or even you get a heavy storm, it doesn't even have to be traveling. But anyhow, when it wants to ride up on that curb, it's going to hit that and get redirected around. That's the purpose of the counter flash, to keep it out of and minimize any erosion effect. So we also do the same thing with the plumbing. So on the plumbing, the uh, if that cap pops off, it's not a worry because that will just go into your holding tank. Like other ones, all around there is all sealed. So it can't go anywhere. It's just going to end up going into a holding tank. I doubt you're going to get you know, 20, 30 gallons of water uh, from a rainstorm through a one and a half inch pipe, uh, you know, in one storm. So all of the uh, gutters right here, they're all, we don't use butyl, so they are all glued on. And then we put two strikes of caulking on there. So once we put the gutter on, get that contrast with the, with the uh, awning there. I'm looking through the viewfinder here and it's looking like it's all black. I can't see it. But uh, with the gutter, once we put the adhesive caulk on the back and we push it on there, it'll burp up, we strike it down. And then once that cures, we put a strike over it. And then once that cures, we go over it yet again with another strike. So I don't know if you want to say we got three strikes on there, but we do put, we'll say two strikes on there. So the reason I put two strikes on there is these things rack and twist and flex, which is one of the reasons why you want to glue everything together. You need to have that glue in there. The adhesive acts as a buffer and it absorbs all of the energy from these things moving and racking so that energy doesn't get transposed into or imposed on like the fasteners the screws and in this case it's screws some other ones would probably be staples or even the way they do them with some pin nails but <clears throat> all that said the um, 
all that energy will start to get these things to rack and twist and flex. If we just put one strike on there, and as you're, if you've ever used, I'm sure you've used a caulking gun, as you're squeezing the tube and you're going along, you're going to hear it pop and crackle. You just injected an air bubble. So the point of putting another strike on it is because if that air bubble breaches, then you potentially have a leak. You don't want to have a leak, right? That's the whole ob objective to getting a new roof put on. So we go over it again because what are the chances of having one air bubble land on top of another? Probably slim to none. I'd probably hit the lottery four times, you know, before that ever happened. But, um, so anyhow, that's why we put all that on there. And then uh, you can see we made a nice curb for the, the antenna. And then you got these stands in the back. That helps give the air conditioner some balance. We did change out the... Um, there's a, a, a gasket up underneath there. We do that to all of them, but there's a gasket up underneath there. We replace that. So now, getting back to the rainstorm, here comes the rain trickling down, and I don't want the wind to blow it back into that foam gasket that's up underneath there. So I put yet another piece of counter flash that goes under the hood of this, and it goes over the counter flash of my curb. So now it gets pushed down below that, and it gets run out, so it doesn't get interfering with the, with the foam gasket. So, um... You got all that. Let's see, this is easy to wash too. You can just get up here with some, uh, you know, dish soap, scrub brush, you pressure wash it if you wanted to. It's a pretty resilient roof system. So, get all that. Then you come over here to the skylight, which where we did replace the lens. So, we don't glue them, we do not screw them down, we glue them down. They're solely glued down. So, you have this lens here, and then when you go inside, you're going to have an inner lens. That's where, you, when you're in the shower and that lens, you see that's an inner lens. If you take that down, you're going to look at this lens. So you get that cavity that's in there. And especially now when it's getting cooler out, you'll probably have some frost on top of this. And then the sun comes up and it evaporates this off. Well, when you have frost on the top of here, you're going to have some on the inside of this as well. Right up underneath it in the inside. So now the sun evaporates this off, but it cannot evaporate what's on the inside. So all that water tends to drool down. And when that drools down, it'll get either, in this case, it would get into the curb, or if you didn't have this, it'll get into your decking. So a lot of times people get up there and they keep saying, hey, I've got, you know, leaks coming from my skylight and it doesn't look cracked. Well, it's probably a condensation issue and it's been happening over time. It's chronic. So that's known as, again, dry rot. So all that said, I, I don't want to have any issues with it. So I designed up these, this is a solar fan, and that's the intake. If this pops off, take the plumbing and put it on top of there or cover that because that is an open trough all the way in there. That's for air. So now the sun comes up, it's evaporating this. When the sun comes up, that kicks on. It'll draw the air up, over, in between the two lenses and comes back out. That's how that works. You know, obviously I can't warranty these. They're just, um, you know, I, I just took Chinese made, you know, so they're just probably some cheap stuff but you still uh, it's gonna work and you just gotta make sure it is working so every now and then you just check it so getting back on all that if it's working when if we can check it uh, while it's when it comes back for inspection we'll do that but that's something the customer could probably do too is just you can almost listen to it to see if you can hear it going while it's outside you know or you could probably put like a match right here and see if it's blowing the smoke from the match away you know something like that but my point is that if that does come off, it's going to have, that will leak. So you need to make sure if you can't get these caps on there, tape it up, do whatever you got to do till you get a new cap. So we don't warranty the skylight, I don't warranty the lenses, things like that, I don't warranty. We warranty the roof system that it's not going to leak. That's what it comes down to. All our curbs, weldings, and things like that are what we warranty. So... The, we want to see these come back. You know, the first time we like to see them is no later than 60 days. I'd like to see them come back for an initial inspection. We do show customers how to do an inspection. So if a customer can't come back, you know, he needs or she needs to do an inspection on it to make sure everything is okay because it is fresh. When I say everything, I mean like we check the welds and we show them how to do all that. And also check the caulking. We leave a care package in case you need additional caulking. Maybe it's a lot of times up in those corners where those transitions are. That's usually a common spot, you know, where you may have to add some extra caulking at the risk of saying putting more on, more on. Uh, <laughs> you know, you may have to add some in here. Possibly. I don't know. I don't know how bad this racks and twists and flexes. 
but that's why we want to see it. But when you do inspect it, you want to put some pressure on the caulking. Just don't look at it. Put some pressure on it. See what's going on. Put some pressure on it. Put some pressure on it. You got to take a little bit of responsibility for, you know, the coach. And then you come back once a year. We're going to inspect it for you. And the warranty, the way the warranties work is they go annually. So we'll do that for 20. This is a 20-year roof system. I'll do it for 20 years. It doesn't matter to me. Um, so you just, you'll come back and we'll... You know, this is now is 23, so we'll say in 24, his inspection will probably go from January, or excuse me, his warranty will go from January 24 to January 25. He comes in January 25, now he's got it from January 25 to January 26, and so on. So that's how it works. Um, if there's a, any damage that we could have caught otherwise, you know, it, say some customers, and I've had some customers not bring them back, not bring them back, and it's simple things that we could have caught. You know, and now we got to tear something apart. Well, that's not fair to me if I haven't seen it for years and then it starts creating a massive problem and now I got to go in and redo all that work. That's not fair on me. I'm willing to stand behind my work, but I'm just asking that I can see it, you know. So uh, if we have to do all that, then, you know, we generally we're going to pass that expense on to the customer because it's a lot of work for us. These materials, the way we put them together, they just don't come apart like an RV, you know, material does. This roof isn't coming up. It's not coming up. You're going to have to slice this all up. You're not peeling it up like, I don't know if you've seen us pull some of these up on some of the other videos, but you can literally pull these back, no problem. You're not doing it with this. Uh, you really, are, I'm, and I'm, I mean that, you're not pulling it up. <laughs> you're going to have to cut it all up hard and everything and little slivers to get it off of here. And then we got the decking glued down. So you can see, you know, we take the time to make sure it's done right, and we don't want to have those um, extra extra work if we don't have to just let us see the coach bring it back so we put a new refrigerator lid on there as well and uh, other than that I think we covered everything on here so let me show you the material and if you want one of these just let us know we'll be glad to mail one out to you so there's a you can see our website there there's our telephone number and then these are the three colors they come in so I just heat welded all of this together so you can see this is a structured membrane and if you look you can probably see if I get in the right light you can see the little squares in there and that's a mesh that's built into the roof system and it helps to resist like tree branches and hail things like that it uh, makes it real strong you're just not gonna cut this like you would a regular RV roof and put a slice in it it's gonna take a little bit of work so but um, other than that uh, I think we covered everything on there the insert trim that we replaced that as well and what that is what the insert trim is, is this piece here. That's called vinyl insert trim. Uh, I special order it, so again, I don't sell anything here. So, uh, but I have to special order two miles of that at a time. And there's a big difference, and I like it because it keeps, again, keeps more water out. So this is your, your typical, there's your gutter right here. There's your gutter. So this is your typical insert trim. You can see it just fits in that track right there. See that track? It just slides in. So water can get down on that track and it travels. I'm trying to keep all that water out. So this one that we use has a groove in it. i to show you a little better. You can see that little groove. So it sits in the track and on the outside, inside and outside. So it's locking everything out. We also sealed, and I don't want to take this one apart because this black is really hard to get back in. But every single screw that we put in is all sealed. There's a grommet all around every single one of them. So, like I said, the black is kind of hard to make sure we get it back in place. It's a little more rigid than the white that I have. But um, that's, uh, that's about the gist of it. So we got everything all set, ready to go. Like I said, we appreciate the work. And if you have any questions, you, know, just, you can send us an email at go to rvroofinstall.com or give us a call. We'll be glad to help you out with your project. We do not do any quotes or anything on social media. People see these and they go, hey, how much was this? How much was that? A lot of these are different. So just give us a call and then we'll know what your coach is and then we'll get the pricing together for you. Um, we appreciate y'all watching. And uh, other than that, well, I guess we see you on the care next package. one. Right. So in our care package, we have caulking. We got primer. We have got two patches. Those are heat patches. We got a patch pill and stick patch. We got a checker tool, we've got a magnet, and the rest of this is just pens, keychains, brush, nozzle. Okay, 
So, if we have a hole in the roof, it will simulate a hole. You can do hole simulations. We say we got a hole there. Here's your tree branch come through, and you're like, oh man, I got a hole in my roof. It's leaking. So what you want to do? And it's raining out. Right now it's raining. You're like, crap, I got to stop that leak. You want to get in there, and if you can't get that nozzle in there, don't worry about it. Make it a little bigger. What you're trying to do, you need to get up underneath the roofing. Like this. This is what we need to do. Get up underneath the roofing. Then you're going to take and you're going to put this up inside there and you're going to squeeze, 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 squeeze. Hopefully this thing is plugged up. There it goes. You squeeze, squeeze. You're going to try and get up underneath this part too. Squeeze up underneath there. Put some more underneath there. Well, we are getting this thing all boogered up. But then what we're going to do, you're going to push it together. See how it is out? That's sealed. You're done. This is a moisture cured product. So what? It's a hot mess. Looks terrible. Who cares? Keep the water out. So now, the next day, we're going to go up there, and that's going to be cured looking like that. So we're going to take a knife, and you just shave it down. You shave it down with a knife. I'm just going to obviously wipe this off. Now you say, hey, I want something a little better than that. So what we're going to do is get some cleaner. This is a terrible rag. You get another one. You got one on you? No. Oh, we got a rag, get a rag, get a rag, get a rag, get a rag. Talk about it. Nope, just leave it alone. Oh, leave it alone right now. Uh, we're recording now. Are we on? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. So now we cleaned it off with a knife. I just washed that off because it's still wet. Take that off. So now we got a patch. This is a peel and stick patch. We're going to take that, we're going to center it over there. Just take a pen and go around like this. I like to kind of put a dash like that so I know who's where, what, and where and how. So now there, there's what I got. So in the package we've got primer. We also have a brush. I'm going to take that and you're going to go all inside the square. And you're also going to go outside this square about three-eighths of an inch. Outside about three-eighths of an inch or so. And once you get that, there's a film on the back. You peel the film, now you know which side you are, see, because there's your marks. And you peel that film back. I get the fingers, fat fingers in there to get a get the film off of this thing. This is just a regular roof tape. That's all it is. We put them in all the care packages. I get that daggum thing off of there. Probably need some fingernails. Probably help. Come on. There it is. Okay. Hit, huh? Hit. There it is. Now you got the film. You take that film. So now we're gonna line it back up like this. We already got the primer under there. You just peel the film back, and as you do, you just rub it down like this. Sometimes that film will get a little stuck in there. This is just a butyl. You just kind of try to keep it as even as you can and flat as you can. Boom, you're done. There it is. So now out here, this is where your primer is. You put the primer on there. You got primer there, and now you're going to put primer here. You want to prime all this area with your brush. Prime all that. Then you're going to come back. Once you get it all primed, then you're going to put a little bit of caulking on it, just like this. That's simple. It doesn't all sit in there. You can always take your finger and go around it if you want. We're trying to obviously stop the leak and make one of it. There's going to be a little more permanent of a patch than just that, that plug that we did when it was raining. So now that we got that all done, what the whole purpose of it is this part here, this part underneath here, that's a butyl. When the sun hits that, if you didn't have the caulking on there, it will cause it to release and curl up just like I'm doing here. And it'll start coming loose. That's why you need the primer. That's why 
when you prime it, you're going to prime on top of this because nothing will stick to it. Nothing, the caulking will not stick to this patch and it won't stick to the roof unless you use the primer. That's how you do a patch. Ta-da! All done.